welcome back to This Old Nerd. I am This Old Nerd, I as Akhtar. This show is all about having the most tech forward life and home you could possibly have. Now, one of the things that life doesn't give us a lot of is time. This show is about projects that you can do relatively quickly. I'll do all the research, I'll do all the work, and I'll do a lot of failing. So hopefully when you go ahead and follow our steps, you'll be able to do stuff in no time. Today's project is all about pushing a button. Now, that doesn't seem very tech forward, does it? It's like, hey, why would you need to push a button? And why would you need a technological way to do that? I'm glad you asked. Here's the problem I was faced with. My home office was in a loft space. And to get to it, you basically had to go up a ladder, go the entire length of the apartment, and then you could sit down. If somebody buzzed the apartment buzzer, I would have to get out of that loft space as quickly as possible. Did I mention that the loft space is about four feet tall? So you gotta crouch and hopefully not knock your head and get down the ladder and be, no. Did I mention that the loft space was only about four feet tall? So getting in and out of it was not particularly easy. I thought, hey, how about a fire pole? If I get a fire pole, I can just slide down. That's not gonna work in an apartment building because I am not gonna lose my security deposit. So I just had to figure out how can I push a button from far away? And then I found the solution. Here's what you're gonna need for this project. This is a Switch Bot Bot. This is the device that actually pushes the button for you. It works over Bluetooth. So you'll need a phone to set it up with an app. If you want to increase your range beyond Bluetooth, you're gonna need a hub. That's the Switch Bot Hub Mini. This little device connects to your Wi-Fi network, which then makes this device accessible beyond Bluetooth. Okay, so let's set up a Switch Bot Bot using the Switch Bot app. For demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use an iPad since it's a bigger screen. I'm gonna hit the Switch Bot app and let's set it up. Okay, so we're taking the SwitchBot bot out of the box, putting it aside. Excuse my creaky chair. Now I'm gonna add this device to the SwitchBot app. Hit and plus. Scanning for Bluetooth devices nearby. Seeing a bot. Tap to control to help you identify the bot you'd like to add. Not exactly great English. We're gonna select bot 71, then hit next. Here we have the opportunity to name our bot. We're gonna name this Sirens in the Background. Then we're gonna select a room. Apparently can't do that. Sounds fine to me. Hit next. And now you can see at the very top, Sirens is connected via Bluetooth. You can connect this to your hub. Setting up your hub is pretty much the exact same thing. You just need to add a device. This device is connected to your hub. You can control it remotely. I just wanna reiterate that if you're not using this device outside of Bluetooth range, you don't need the hub. But I wanna use it outside of that range. Creek, next. Install. There's actually an installation guide to show you how to attach this device. It's kind of hilarious. There's only a little sticky back. You remove that sticker and you can attach it to a device. I'm really glad they gave us instructions there. Hit next. You see that the app was not built for landscape. It's showing you which mode you can set up one. There's press mode, switch mode. I want to press mode in mine. So we're going to hit this button. Connect your device. Okay. I'm going to confirm. I don't want a pictorial guide on how to install it. I, so we're just gonna test it now. We wanna see if it works. So I'm gonna hit the test button. That's this button here. It's working. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's what we wanna see. Excellent. You attach it where you want to. That's not very difficult. And we're done with this bot. Sirens is good to go. Let's show you all this stuff finally working. This is not Sirens, this happens to be DoorBot. I like creative names. So DoorBot is attached using that adhesive. This is a three button intercom, talk, listen, and door. Let's get this thing to go. Go into the app, using press mode on DoorBot, starting now. There it goes. There you can see that DoorBot has depressed the button, thereby unlocking the front door of this apartment building. Hopefully nobody's coming in. What you're also seeing is how long that this device is pressing down. The amount of time your Switch Bot Bot presses down can be modified in the app itself. So let's talk a little bit about the, sw the, sw the Switch Bot Hub Mini. So let's talk a little bit about the Switch Hub. So let's talk about the Switch Bot Hub Mini a little bit. This device will connect your Bluetooth switch bot, bot to your network. So if you're anywhere in your network, guess what? You can remotely control that bot. That's great. But the Hub Mini gives you something else. 
it gives you access to cloud services. So if you want to connect this to your Google Assistant or Amazon or Ift or Siri shortcuts, you can. That's right, if you're outside of the house and you got this connected to the cloud stuff, this will allow you to remotely let yourself into the building. You're like, why would you want to do that? I'll tell you why. Are you holding a lot of groceries? Is it raining outside or snowing and you just need to get into the building? You can actually do that. Okay, so let's run a little test right now. This is Sirens to so the guy we just set up and this phone, the Wi-Fi is off and the Bluetooth is off. So the only way to access Sirens is this little cloud there. So I'm gonna hit the button. If it works, we'll see the finger-like thing come out. That sounded dirty. Ah, <laughs> it's working. It's working. Let me try it again. Yes, it works. That means if I'm outside of Bluetooth range and I'm out of Wi-Fi range, it's going to work through the cloud. That's great. That's really great. So since you can connect it to Google and Amazon and even Siri, guess what you can do? You can set up a routine or a voice command so you can say things like, hey, let me in. This is actually, yeah, bingo. It's working. It's fantastic when it works. So let's talk a little bit about the downsides because it doesn't work every single time in my experience, which is heartbreaking. In my experience, I have found that the SwitchBot bot in Bluetooth works almost every single time. On the Wi-Fi network, almost every single time. When I'm outside the Wi-Fi network, that's when things get a little bit wonky. I will say I have had better experiences with iOS devices outside the network than I have with Android devices. And that's because the app was being put to sleep in the background. That little battery saver feature was screwing up how this thing worked. So I had to make sure that that app was never put to sleep. That actually helped some of the problems. So if you're running this on Android and you're like, why is this not working every single time with my routine? The app needs to be alive when you want it to be alive. Also, if you want speed, you do not want the app turning itself off. It's really annoying. That's not the fault of SwitchBot. That is the fault of the power saving features. So let's talk about the partner acceptance rating. How annoying is this for the people in your home? Does your wife hate this? Does your son hate this? Because you've added this little thing to push a button. Tell you what, since it's a bonus, it doesn't really have a huge impact on them unless they get locked out. I've seen it where my wife is locked out. And she's like, hey, I can get in using SwitchBot. My son can do the same thing. And if they need me to open the door, I can do that. But at least they can get inside. When the weather is bad, when it's raining or snowing, and it's just miserable out there, to get into the building was a lot easier. Back when I had dogs, guess what? One of my dogs hated the rain. Telling SwitchBot to open the door for me before I got there, my dog loved it. She had no idea. I didn't bring out the keys. We got right in and we could get to the door. It was really, really nice. So for partners, they really like it because it's not mandatory. When you add stuff like this, it's good for you. When it doesn't work all the time, it's hard to complain because you can always whip out your key if you have a key. I should have said this at the beginning, but SwitchBot did not pay us or provide us anything. So if you buy a SwitchBot, please use the links in the description. I'm really curious what kind of projects you'll use for the SwitchBot. Uh, you click the links, we might get a commission, which is good for us because we could use any and all support you can give us. Check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash IAS, that's I-Y-A-Z. There, you can support the show. You'll get early access. We could have live streams if we reach a certain level. You also get the opportunity to get video credits on these videos, so that would be greatly appreciated. You can always help out the show by just sharing links, liking, and subscribing. That helps us out tremendously as well. I've been Ayaz Akhtar asking you, how's your tech life? Because it could be better. So you've been wearing pants the whole time. If you made it this far, congratulations. There's a bonus tip at the end, and in this case, it's NFC tags. SwitchBots also work with NFC tags. So if you want, you could place a little NFC sticker sold by SwitchBot. You can put it anywhere you want and use your phone. You tap your phone on top of it and then the action happens. So if I press this against my phone, it buzzes and on the top, you see that little green bar? That means that this actually activated. I can hear the little zzz noise that's happening over there. This works sometimes better than using the app when I'm outside of the apartment. So I came up with an idea. How about I mount one of these outside, like around, but make sure it's hidden. 
I'm not gonna show you exactly where I've located my Switch bought NFC tag outside, but since this is white and it shows up and it's got a little label on it, I figured, hey, how about I hide it? The door downstairs is black, so I took a big Sharpie marker, colored one of these things in, and hid it on the door outside. Now, if you place a phone, my phone in particular, it'll buzz you in. Please don't beat me up outside so you get access to my apartment with these two things. It's a little silly because if you beat me up, you have access to my keys too because I still have keys. Dude, don't beat me up. That's not, that's not the point. 